In part A of this question, we are asked to calculate the inductance of a solenoid. We know that the solenoid is 300 turns, and that would be symbolized by capital N, has a radius of 5 centimeters, so that would be lowercase r, and then a length of 20 centimeters, and that's lowercase l. The symbol for inductance, of course, is capital L, so we need a relationship between all four of these variables. We know that for a solenoid, the inductance L is given by this equation right here. So why don't we come down for part A and recopy that equation, and then we'll begin to consider plugging in some of the values. Basically, we have a constant multiplied by the number of turns squared times the area divided by the length. Now, the question doesn't give us the cross-sectional area of the solenoid. It only gives us the fact that it has a radius of 5 centimeters. That implies, of course, that the solenoid is circular shaped. So the cross-sectional area of that solenoid would be the area of a circle, which is indeed pi r squared. So we're actually going to rewrite this equation, and for the area, we will substitute pi r squared. And then at this point, we're ready to plug in the known values. The constant mu naught has a value listed over here, 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meters per amp. We're going to multiply that by the capital N, the number of turns, which was 300. Don't forget to square that value. Times pi times the radius squared. The radius is given in centimeters. We would want to convert that into the standard unit of meters. So take your radius of 5 and multiply it by 10 to the minus 2. That will convert it into meters. And of course, don't forget to square it because it's the radius squared in the equation. And then we divide by the length of the solenoid, which is 20 centimeters. Again, that needs to be converted into meters, so just make sure you multiply that by 10 to the minus 2. When you punch this into your calculator, it might be wise to put the quantity in the denominator in a set of parentheses. So pick up your calculator, punch this in, and you should get an inductance of 0 0.00. 444, and then the standard unit of inductance is Henry's. So that's the correct answer, but your homework system might prefer you to enter it in as millihenries. So we just make a little conversion here. We know that one millihenry is 10 to the negative 3 Henry's. When we multiply by the conversion factor in the way that we've arranged it, the Henry's will cancel out and leave you with a final unit of millihenries. So take your answer and multiply by 1 over 10 to the negative 3, and you end up with 4.44 millihenries. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. In part B, we are asked to determine the energy stored in the solenoid when the current flowing through its windings is half of an amp. So solenoids certainly are devices that store magnetic potential energy. And we know that that potential energy stored within the inductor is equal to 1 half times the inductance times the current squared. So we're indeed going to use this equation to determine the energy when the current, which is I, is half of an amp. So we'll come down here and we'll rewrite the equation first. The potential energy in the inductor is 1 half times the inductance times the current squared. Your homework system probably wants you to report the energy in millijoules, so we're actually going to use the millihenry value for the inductance. It's a bit of a shortcut. So we can plug in for L the 4.44 millihenries as long as we realize that the answer will come out in millijoules rather than joules. So if you use the value up here, the henry's value rather than millihenries, then your energy answer would be in joules. But again, we'll keep it in millihenries so that our answer comes out in millijoules. We then multiply by the current, which was stated in the question as 0.5 amps. Of course, again, don't forget to square that value. And when we do this, we get a potential energy of 0.555, and as noted, the unit will be in millijoules. So this would be the correct answer to part B.